The upcoming 2023 FIM Awards will take place in Liverpool on the 2nd of December. Waiting for this amazing event, we have decided to discover the British motorcycle culture, riding across England, meeting incredible people and discovering lots of exciting things. So is there a better place than Hinkley to find a proper British bike? This is the home of Triumph. My name is Dominika Grenjova and I'm sharing this wonderful adventure with a special person, the two-time world superbike champion, James Tosland. stop at the Triumph shop to pick up some gadgets and apparel. But now, let's go meet Steve Sargent, the Triumph Chief Product Officer, who will present us a factory exhibition and tell us the stories of some of the most iconic bikes ever. So hi, I'm Dominica. Hi, I'm Steve. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to see you again, Steve. Nice to see you, James. And you, Paul, and you? Yeah, well? good. Yeah, good, thank you. Good business all right? Yeah, very good, mate. Yeah, good. Yeah, so... Welcome to Triumph HQ. Thank you uh, for having us. This mm -hmm. is the official centre of Triumph globally. Mm -hmm. um, this is where we do all of our R&D, our development work. And, uh, you know, we've got a huge army of engineers down the bottom there beavering away on developing new bikes. So, uh, yeah. And Thank you. How about moving into this Should we go and have a look? Museum, yeah? Go and have a look what we've got in here. <laughs> From the new to the old. From the new to the mm -hmm. old. Very exciting. Yeah, so this is our uh, factory visitor experience. So, you know, we get Triumph fans, bike, bike fans generally from all over mm -hmm. the world. You know, for some people it's a pilgrimage, right? Yes. I met a guy this morning, um, he's come from New Zealand. Wow. He's come from New, I mean, he's on holiday all, anyway. All, all the way. But he's, but he's, a, tri he's a Triumph fan, and mm -hmm. one of the things he wanted to do whilst he was on holiday in the UK mm -hmm. was come here. It's, so, a, it's a real heritage like flagship for, for the UK, isn't it? It's, yeah. It's still, still just owned, right? privately owned still. Still company. privately owned, so... Mm -hmm. um, Triumph's got a long history, yeah. mm -hmm. so it started really with um, actually a German guy. A guy called Siegfried Bettmann came over from Germany and started the uh, Triumph Motorcycle Company. That was back in uh, the early 1900s. So we've, what we've got here, if you look at this bike here, this is actually the first prototype that Triumph made, which Motorized as you can bicycles. see, is a bicycle. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bicycle. It's a bicycle with an engine, engine. <laughs> with an engine attached. But that's what motorcycles were. So in the early days of Triumph, a lot of the bikes were single cylinder engines, and we've got a lot of those on display over here. Yeah. Um, and then really came out with the first uh, parallel twin cylinder engine. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and that is what really kind of kick-started Triumph and got them going and also got them recognized as a performance brand. Um, so if you look at what um, Triumph is actually historically known for, it's very similar to what we're known for today. It's really getting that kind of balance of performance from the engine, but also a sweet handling chassis. Yeah. And getting that kind of balance right. Um, between the two things. And well, that's mm -hmm. what Triumph was known for back then. It's what we still try and push on now, really. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then, if we go a bit further down here, so this is really the bikes towards the end here, starting with the red one, um, are the first of the Hinkley era yep. uh, of Triumph. So Triumph actually went bankrupt uh, towards the end of the 1970s. Mm -hmm. So the company went uh, into liquidation and it was bought by a guy called John Bloor. Mm -hmm. John bought the company and what he said was, okay, we're basically going to rip up all of the old designs and start afresh. He, mm -hmm. he recognized that for Triumph to be successful, it needed a fresh start and it needed a lot of investment. Yeah. Um, so he basically threw all of the old designs away and said, right, let's get some of the latest Japanese bikes in. It was quite clear that as a company, Triumph had to get itself bang up to date. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And then when they relaunched uh, in the early 1990s, it was with, with bikes like these. So, uh, it, 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 so it's really interesting to see that development to kind of where you went from that. Yeah. That. Mm -hmm. But then because you had that as your heritage, once the brand then became a brand again and got that, 
um, got that status back. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, what what John didn't want to do is he didn't want to launch with something that looked like a classic Triumph because mm -hmm. he wanted to reset people's perception in yeah. terms of what the company was the all about, yeah. the manufacturing, mm -hmm. and it was, you know, from day one it was all about quality, quality, quality. John put an awful lot of his own money in yeah. um, mm -hmm. to develop uh, the first factory, which was just down the road from here, and put machining centres in spent millions and millions of pounds in developing our own manufacturing capability yeah. um, because he thought that that was the way that Triumph was gonna grow. Yeah. And then over the other side of the room, we've got a lot of mm -hmm. race bikes, so, you know. That's your speciality, James. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Triumph's been involved in racing, really, from, from the start. Um, and we've been involved in all, all, all forms of racing, so, you know, we've been involved in roads racing, T TT's always been quite significant for Triumph. Yeah. Um, you know, we've done land speed records, um, we're involved in uh, off-road racing from the start, so we've done, you know, scrambling motocross, desert racing. How many years has it been since you've actually produced a motocross bike then? Oh, as a motocross bike. <laughs> well, it must have been 1960s, yeah. something like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Um, so it's a long time. Yeah. So it's a long time. But there, mm -hmm. but there is a history there. Yeah. You know, um, obviously a modern motocross bike is so far removed from oh, those yeah. kind of bikes. We definitely wouldn't get away with coming out with a motocross bike that looked like something from no, the sixties. No, no. <laughs> you know? um, so yeah, the the, the, so the this new... is a real this is a real homecoming then this motocross uh, yeah. project mm -hmm. that you've got. Yeah, and um, yeah. and it's it's one of those um, it's one of those worlds where you can't go in there. You're not. You're not going to sell bikes off the back of the fact that they look the best in the paddock. Yeah. You know, if they're not winning races. Yeah, good point. Mm -hmm. You're not winning races in good motocross. You, it's all performance based. It's all performance based. Mm -hmm. um, so, as we move around here, this is getting a little bit more your kind of era, yeah. I think, James. <laughs> so, uh, remember Craig, you remember bless Craig him. Jones? I certainly do, bless him. Yeah, yeah. bless him. Yeah. So, yeah, he raced for us uh, in the British Championship. So the 675 has been hugely successful for us in racing. So we've won yeah. uh, TTs with um, Gary Johnson, won yeah. a TT on one. Uh, Pete Hickman's won a TT mm -hmm. on yeah. one. Uh, we've won the Daytona 200. Yep. So yep. Uh, Danny Eslick yep. uh, won on a 675. And then since then, obviously we've moved into the 765 yep. era of this engine. And um, it, was, it was nicer for a ride as well to uh, to go for like that 765cc because a 600cc to the 990s was such a jump. Yeah. You know, to have that bit extra torque now with, with the Triumph, it kind of gives you that similar kind of, uh, or, you know, better, a lesser transfer from Super Sport. Yeah. From the Moto 2 to. And you, and you, and you can see you can see how important that's been. If you look at some of the riders that have come through that era yeah. and gone into MotoGP yeah. and been successful pretty quickly, yeah. really. Yeah. You know, you like yeah. your Bastianinis yeah. and guys like Marquez. this. Marquez, mm -hmm. yeah. Marini's going really yeah. well. Yeah. I mean, you know, we, we get all of the engine data that comes back off of a Moto2 race weekend and yeah. we can see which riders are riding the bikes smoothly yeah. or who's yeah. kind of abusing the engine a little bit. Yeah. And um, I can tell you, Luca Marini's super smooth. Yeah. yeah. So smooth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and this is just a land speed record. So this is, yes. yeah. So, um, <laughs> Actually, you know, if you look historically, Triumph has held the motorcycle land speed record four times. Right. Um, this is our attempt to uh, try and get a fifth uh, hmm. land speed. I wonder so. who's going to do it and when it's going to do it. Yeah. Because the science of, of the wind drag and the, yeah. the, the, the shape of the nose, mm -hmm. so the right amount of air goes above and mm -hmm. below so it doesn't take off. And mm. proper aerodynamics. Yeah. Honestly, the, the science just in the shape of the nose of the land speed record bikes it's incredible to to hit it at a certain point that it doesn't push Without the bike down. flying off, yeah. Yeah, because mm -hmm. it's on the salt flats, or mm -hmm. they do it on sand as well, on mm. the deserts. The science behind it is incredible, and whoever 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 breaks the 400 mile an hour mark on two wheels... Good luck to them. Good yeah. luck to them. <laughs> yeah. and good luck to the rider. Yeah, yeah, to everybody involved. <laughs> yeah. This is the original Steve McQueen Great Escape bike. Um, and apparently the reason why that saddle is as thick as it is, is uh, basically to protect you when you land. Yeah, on that jumpy <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> if, you know, if you know what I mean. Yes. That's suspension. Because <laughs> it was a fair jump that you did, wasn't it? It was a fair, <laughs> jump, a fair jump. So, that, yeah. Isn't it incredible how iconic that was though? I mean, obviously it was a massive movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But did Triumph know what that was going to bring it? As, no. It was incredible, wasn't no, it? No, it's unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah. 
and no obviously... one was expecting that. No, it's one of those. Mm -hmm. It's one of those happy accidents that happens. <laughs> In, in a brand's history, you get moments like that that people never really kind of expected were going to become defining moments for the brand. It becomes but, iconic. But, but they just yeah. do, you know. Um, so, and I think, you know, the thing about triumphs is if you look at a triumph and look, if you look at that silhouette, mm -hmm. if you went and asked a, a school kid to draw what they think a motorbike looks like. This is it. They would, yeah. They, they'd draw that. Yeah. yeah. And then over on this side, we've got a few more. Uh, so we've been involved in, you know, Quite a few more. Got the Fonz there in Happy mm -hmm. Days, for mm -hmm. example. Oh, uh, yeah. oh, I didn't realise he was on a tramp as well. Though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mar Marlon Brando in the Wild ones. That was one of the original kind of biker yes. movies. Yeah. Uh, and then the Mission Impossible ones, right? Obviously. Mm -hmm. and yeah, Mission Impossible bike mm -hmm. we've got. Um, so upstairs we've got mm -hmm. a little exhibition showing how we develop bikes and stuff like that. Okay. I don't know if you guys want to go up there and have a look at that? Sure. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Why not? We'll just go mm -hmm. go out this door here and then. Mm -hmm. This is what makes them tick. So this is, mm -hmm. yeah, this is what you need to build a motorbike, basically. Mm -hmm. um, Where do you get all your uh, components from? Is it all UK based or? So all over the world, really. Yeah. I mean, the, the components come from all over the place, but we're a little bit different from a lot of motorcycle companies in terms of how much we do ourselves. Yeah. So we actually, um, we cast the crankcases right. ourselves. Yeah. We cast a lot of the engine covers. Yeah. Uh, we do all of the machining. Uh, we machine the cylinder heads. We make our own camshafts, we make our own crankshafts, yep. um, we fabricate all the frames ourselves. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is um, this is a speed triple rear subframe, so mm -hmm. all of this, we do all of the welding ourselves. Mm -hmm. We have our own plastic injection molding machines. Oh, yeah. 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 So this is, um, this basically is how we start the development work. So, so when we're first developing the bike, what we have to do is we have to work to get the geometry right yep. to make sure it goes around corners yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it stops. Depending on um, the weight is. Depending on, yeah. So you've got, mm -hmm. to, you've got to get the weight distribution right. You've got to get your, you know, your fork offset Fuel. right. You've got, yeah. Aerodynamic. Yeah, you've mm -hmm. got to get all of that right. But at the same time that you're doing that, you also have to work with the stylists on the clay model yeah. to get the look of the thing right. You can't do either of those things in isolation. If you try and if you try and style it and then engineer, yeah. engineer it, it won't work. Yeah. Also, if you try and engineer it and then style it, it won't work. So, so you can't, all, you, all at the same time. So you've got to do those. Mm -hmm. You've got to progress those two things together. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And how many tests, or how long does it take until you actually? from production go into the market? So for, for a bike like this, where mm -hmm. we're starting effectively with nothing, so we didn't have an engine, we didn't have a chassis, mm -hmm. that's probably somewhere between a four and a half and a five year program to wow. get that that's, into production. Mm -hmm. Also the bobber, I really, really like the bobber. I oh, the bobber's cool, the yeah. The bit is so yeah. wonderful, yeah. very classic feel. So this is, this is what we call a TFC version, so we do a limited edition factory mm -hmm. custom version of some of the bikes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we put some nice little bits of detail on here, like the billet machine yokes and stuff like that. And the, it's beautiful. The, uh, and it's also got more power than the, the standard bike as well. Oh, at least Why I've got my number on. I've got my number on there. Yeah. I didn't race yeah. that one, but I've got my... Why 52? Oh, God. I don't, since, I was, <laughs> since I was 16 years old. <laughs> There's a few people like in here that remember randomly that. chose Yes, them. it was. Yeah, I had a uh, choice of 6, 12, and 52. Okay. And I've been 6 and 12. I got lapped when I was number 12 by Carl Harris. You know Carl Harris? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. At yeah. Brands Hatch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I thought, I'm not being them two. I'll try 52 and it worked out. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a wonderful tour. Yeah, thank so you that's, so much for that. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, mm -hmm. no problem. It was really enjoyable. All right, cool. a great pleasure to know you. Lovely, and Thank you. you so much for everything. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Good. Thank you. Well, to leave and to start a journey. Helmet on, let the adventure begin. Next stop, London. <laughs> <laughs>